Hi everyone! We're so excited to be here live today um, just to have a conversation with you and um, with us here that are all trying to help small businesses. I'm Kelly Davison and we're sitting here today at the East County Chamber of Commerce. We have uh, joining us today Rick Wilson who's the CEO of the East County Chamber of Commerce and Marcus Sharp who is the founder of Rebuild East County. And today we're going to get uh, some diverse perspectives from everyone here, including myself, I'll be talking about customer experience. Rick's going to give us his perspective from the sort of municipal point of view and how the chamber is supporting the city's small businesses, and also looking at things like cash flow and operations, um, things that Marcus Sharp is helping small businesses with as well. So let's get started, and let's start with you, Rick. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Good. So tell me a little bit about, you know, I know you are the heartbeat of this <laughs> chamber, and you always have your thumb on the pulse of not only East County, but really San Diego County. So tell me what you're feeling and seeing from the small businesses around, and maybe a little bit about what the chamber is doing to step up and support what's going on here. Yeah, so obviously everybody knows it's a tough time right now during COVID um, for small businesses, medium-sized businesses, all businesses, and uh, businesses trying to figure out how to pivot during this tough time. And so businesses um, have really been struggling with, I think, the back and forth of being able to open, needing to go back. Um, that's been a, a challenge for sure. Um, but one of the biggest things is really working with the cities and the county of San Diego um, on what it is that businesses need helping uh, the county and the city understand what those needs are so that they can work on programs like uh, the CARES Act grant or COVID-19 grants, uh, opportunities for businesses helping them during this tough time. I know the PPP was very helpful to some businesses, but we also know a lot of businesses that have not received that PPP yet, even though they were eligible. Um, so for us as a chamber, it's not only working with businesses individually, businesses that are members, non-members, uh, but working with city officials, elected officials, because they're the ones that can create and work on legislation and opportunities during this tough time to allow, like the businesses, I believe the city of El Cajon is one of the first in East County to allow businesses to have restaurants outside. And that was before, about a month or so ago, where businesses started acting on that in other cities uh, surrounding uh, El Cajon started to enact that same law allowing businesses to move outside and have outdoor dining. So again, it's us working on a daily basis, understanding where we are with the state of California, where we are with the county of San Diego, and being able to get those resources needed to those small businesses. Um, so it's, it's, it's continuing to evolve. There's no one right answer right now, but we at the Chamber of here are continuing to look for feedback from businesses and how we can help them. Okay. So we can all contact you, yes. right? <laughs> Your email is? <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, just go to eastcountychamber.org. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is a ton of information on the uh, Chamber website. Tell me about maybe a few of the events and things that you're doing to keep businesses engaged with the Chamber and, and offer that value that you're so great at. Yeah, so thank you. So um, we uh, started back in May uh, putting out virtual programs for the past three plus months. And now that we're getting into the fall, we've been planning for signature events in person. Uh, one of our events, Women in Leadership Luncheon, which is November 13th, we did have to make that virtual due to the fact that right now we cannot foresee being able to get five to 700 people in a room together. Um, but what we are very excited about is Grip It and Rip It Golf Tournament, which is gonna be October 21st at Saquon Resort, uh, the, the uh, Pine Glen three-par executive course. And so that, uh, we're really excited to have that. We are gonna be following the guidelines, of course, to make sure that it's safe. But being out to be able to get outdoors, you know, see a few people, um, get uh, businesses exposed. So we have sponsors at every hole. So those businesses will get uh, some avocation out there, um, as well as on our website, the program, our social media. So if you're interested in that, please let us know at the chamber. And then the one that we've got coming up most ready here is October 15th at the Water Conservation Garden, Politics in Paradise. So that one's gonna be a little bit tougher than we've done in the past two years nice. um, due to the fact of COVID, some restrictions that we need to abide by. But we are excited to be able to get back to in-person events. First Friday breakfast, we did have to reschedule the October 2nd just because again, we're not quite there yet. So again, I will say to everybody, it takes all of us working together to continue to flatten that curve so we can reopen businesses and get back to the normal of what we're looking forward to here. Obviously, we won't be 100% out of COVID, 
But if we work together, if we wear a mask, if we practice the social distancing, we can get these business back reopening and stimulate the economy out here in East County. Excited about that, for sure. Yeah. And you've just been pulling the line so much out here on your own. I want to really acknowledge <laughs> that work that you've done. Well, I come in here often and it's just you. Um, luckily, I think you're getting some help more recently and things are changing, but um, right. thank you so much for well, I you appreciate doing. you saying that, Kelly, but to be honest, there's people out there, hopefully they're watching, they've been a part of our success. So it really is about collaborations and partnerships, which is no different in business. Um, and that's how we're making it work because I am a one man show. But again, with the membership, the partnerships that we have, um, it's what you've been seeing coming out of the chamber is, you know, success to everybody's the help of that. So thank you very much. Yes. And thank you for being open to collaboration and yes. help. I know that you're a real advocate for sort of cross chamber um, connections and bringing small businesses in. I've done workshops with you guys. Yes, I thank yes. you for that. But you, I think, here at the East County Chamber have been especially um, active. Uh, you know, once a week at least, you're doing a virtual event and have been engaging people nonstop. Um, and it's easy to kind of check out during this time, especially yeah. when budgets shrink and uh, everyone's kind of offline. But you're, you've been at it, and thank you. There's so much more, so do check out the Chamber website. And um, if you're not a member, you should join. <laughs> yes, um, this guy is super fun, and uh, you won't be let down as a member of the East County Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. Great. Uh, Marcus, yes. welcome. Yes, thanks for having me. Thanks for having yes. me. So yes. talk to me about how um, Rebuild East County came about and what the purpose of that is, and maybe a little bit about what you're seeing small businesses really struggling with um, and how you're also helping them through what you're offering with Rebuild East County. Well, I saw just the struggle and the bottlenecks of small business, and and I got with my partner Todd. Todd and I would just collaboratively we got together and saw there was a huge gap with small businesses and what they were missing out on, right? And and learning and not picking up, I should say. So we saw that gap and we realized, like, you know what? We have to have an ultimate goal, and that ultimate goal really for us is to just eliminate small business failure. Not, but not just small business. I'm, I'm agreeing with Rick, and it's it's, it's, it's any business. Right. It's a lot of businesses that are suffering and that are, you know, they don't know how vulnerable their businesses are, and more importantly, they don't have any like well-designed solutions to take them to the next level. So, we 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 set out on the quest to just we need something implemented where businesses can come and not get the fluff, but like get get to the crux of what's really going on with the business. So. Right, and you were one of the first places I was able to find who had actually categorized all of the COVID regulations for every industry, and you could go to Marcus and he would help you know what was happening in your industry, what the requirements were for you, and then not only that, but you stepped out to speak to them in person at locations and looked at their operations, their space use, how to maximize cash and revenue for using the space. Uh, so I know that's something you're real skilled at. Yes. Are these the types of things you're still doing with Rebuild East County? Yes, yes we are. I mean, we we see a lot. I mean, the main thing before you hang that sign is you want to actually focus on how much is it going to cost to operate my business? Like, what would be my operating budget, right? And really going line item by line item instead of just pulling you know numbers out of the sky like, this sounds like a good price point that I should start my product and or service and base it around. You actually have to factor in time, you have to factor in, you know, even down to employees, like like the distance is like how much time is it going to take to do X and then do Y. So all those things matter in understanding how your business is going to operate. It's all based on flow, right? So that's how I based I started with cash flow management to understand what are the, how do I connect the unknown to the known in their budget? Like, how is the money flowing in? And more importantly, so the inflows and outflows of, of their money. Mm -hmm. So once you get a handle on that, I mean, the next logical step is the flow of operations. So if you're handling the money side from the cash flow management side or financial management, now it just makes sense that, okay, I went line item by line item on what I need, what I don't need. Now I could do that with my flow of operations. So. Do I need three employees when I could probably do use 1.5 and still maximize what I'm doing as far as the flow of operations? Okay. And you also spoke to maximizing space. Yep. Right? So when you want to maximize space, you got to look at how can I get to a point where at least 80, 90% of my facility is generating revenue? 
Right. And right. that's really key right now when they're only allowed 25% occupancy. Right. So, right. yeah. So you have to think of other things to actually to, to lend to your business model. Like, and that's the important thing. Like, innovation is key right now. Business development is key. So I would say hone in on that. And it's a lot of people, it's just, it's, I mean, it's scarcity times right now. I mean, it's, it's really scary times for people because they've done something for so long with their business model at probably at a good success rate, but all of that has been changed. The whole system of how business operates has changed. Mm -hmm. And so. their, their real physical footprints are changing, so the space they have to work in is turning mm -hmm. into a new shape, and they have to figure out now how to maximize that which is a different blueprint than what they had before. So, Indeed. yeah, and um, great. And good to know that there's someone out there that can help with that. So, yes. that's your guy. <laughs> RebuildEastCounty.com. Yes, Rebuild thank, East County. You. thank you. Any other tips that you wanted to share for would, business owners out there? Or? I would say, at this point, safety leads to charge, right? If safety, you're thinking okay. COVID, yes. and, and I would say have, you know, public safety in your playbook. Right, add that to your playbook and have some, you know, wellness solutions in your playbook. Incorporate that into your playbook. I think you'll be you'll be better off doing that and understanding at every turn safety has to lead to charge at some point. Because if I feel safe, then I my I feel my family will be safe, and I take that same thought concept to my community. Yeah. So, and safety sometimes could. You know, has ended up as an afterthought, you know, in the past. Yes. And now it's really pushed all the way to the front. And not only that needs to be amplified and you need to get creative with it. Indeed. So definitely. It's almost like those words of safety first are ringing true even more now than before where safety first is on job sites and things like that. We're making sure that safety is their priority where maybe it's not always thought about in businesses or restaurants because you feel you're safe in the brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, safety first should be a priority at all times, especially now during COVID-19. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a different definition. It's not, is this yes. building earthquake proof? Yeah, right, is, yeah. You know, is this <laughs> air big. safe to That's breathe? Big. You know, Absolutely. am I safe to sit here? Uh, what can I touch, what can't I touch? Much more fine detail. And as what Marcus said, is it safe? Is it safe for me to come to this business? Is it safe for me to be a patron here? Is it, am I, you know, and, and that's what he's alluding to too, is that comfort. So you walk into that business and you feel like they've done all the protocols that are needed and it, it leads you into a better experience at that. So absolutely, yeah. thanks for thinking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good, well it's good that we have someone on the business operations side. Um, Peachy, uh, my company focuses on the customer side, mm -hmm. uh, which is equally, being compromised right now. Mm -hmm. So um, Peachy, just as a quick introduction, um, we're growing a community of customer experience leaders. And we want small businesses to really take charge of that customer experience. Um, and our vision is to make San Diego a place where it's great to be a customer. So that's our motto, love it. Uh, I wanna start just by recognizing the small businesses first and foremost for the massive challenge that you're tackling and the you know, short-term way you've had to adjust and navigate through all of this and still maintain some sort of customer service. So uh, you're doing a fabulous job. It's, it's a lot for any one business ever to take on. So I wanna recognize that, especially as I continue to talk about customer experience, because sometimes a small business might feel like, well, the customers, they're gonna complain and it's just problems, but I don't wanna hear about that. Uh, <laughs> And um, I want to start by saying, no, you're doing a great job. So um, with that said, customer experience is often misunderstood. You know, it's not just when I walk in and whether or not the business is saying hello or here's some disinfectant. It actually begins before the customer gets to your business and it ends long after. Point. You know, I know, mm -hmm. I'm sure if you had a bad customer experience, you'll think about it for days. It sits in there, it tweaks at you, and you know the next person you see usually gets the butt end of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a living thing. Yes, the experience is a living thing that is um, really, it culminates into that emotion that your customers carry away with them. So it's your, it's your emotional signature of your business that the customer takes, right? It's that stamp that you leave. And uh, business owners do spend a disproportionate amount of time typically on the backside of the business where their expertise lies and just getting stuff done. 
right? But they often don't spend as much time on the details of the customer's experience. And that requires really stepping in from the outside as a customer and thinking through their perspective, right? Absolutely. So there's just so much opportunity now um, because consumers are, are wanting to help small businesses. It's they're willing to forego their Amazon purchase and their other conveniences to go back and help that neighborhood business. We want mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're out there and mm -hmm. I'm a consumer too, so are you, right? right. We're, we're ready right. to help. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, the small business is getting the spotlight again and an opportunity to recapture cu customers or gain more. Absolutely, yeah. right. Yeah, so, uh, and whether or not you create a customer experience, there is one. Yes. It's kind of like a culture, yes, you know, at a company, great. right? Um, whether you're, you create an employee experience or not, a culture will be created. Yep. So it's better to be in control of that and Absolutely. intentional <laughs> about that, right? Yes. Set the foundation, set the expectations, <laughs> and don't leave it to chance. Um, and oftentimes now, as businesses have just at the beginning, you know, starting to get their head around these, um, the COVID requirements and just what do I have Time to do, yeah, right. you're, you're, this customer's been... Um, stuck with, you know, here's our processes, you have to deal with that now. And we understand that, we do, mm -hmm. uh, as customers, because we're all wondering what's, you know, the things, sh things are shifting in our lives mm -hmm. and we can empathize with that. But as time progresses, we know it's not going away and we do have to think about what is the new experience for our customers and what will that look like? Um, most of our customer experience have been extremely compromised. I've said before, sometimes I feel like I'm at a police crime scene out there, right? With the red tape and the scary signs and the don't do this or wear a mask and don't come in and get out. And, ah, I'll go home. You know, it's just, too much. Yeah. yeah. So sensory overload. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, you know, you've got to think about how we can still find create joy, create that experience. Small businesses have the advantage of being upfront and close with their customer. So. Um, some good examples I've seen uh, would be there's a takeout experience that was down in um, Barrio Logan at Chicha Osteria. Yeah, yeah. And while it rivaled dining in, mm. customers mm. prefer some of them now, the takeout experience over the dining in okay. because nice. they made it so special and they were doing things like sending you videos of the food while it's cooking, special notes in the bag, oh. um, Prosecco while you wait. Um, extra servings of a you know surprise side dish, extra food in general. So you think about it for days and days. Just, <laughs> right. There was just so much to it that you weren't missing the experience or that emotional connection that you once had when you were dining in. So um, there's that. And another great example would be Firefly Wellness Day Spa in Mission Hills. Mm -hmm. So I love this because a day spa is where you go to relax, right? right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, so instead of putting signs everywhere, which is what everyone's trying to get away from, they toned it way down. You know, they didn't put the signs on the floor, but they would, you know, they were more discreet about it and careful how they were messaging the customers and more gentle with it because their experience is at its core supposed to be relaxing <laughs> yeah. and not causing right. anxiety. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So remembering to carry through that DNA of your customer experience regardless. Yeah. Um, Okay, last couple of things. I just want to, I have a couple tips I thought would be yeah, just yeah. important top of mind things uh, for customer experience. And that is um, don't step away from your customers right now. Okay, this is the perfect year to not be perfect, right? To say, okay, I, we don't know what we're doing as a business. Is, are we going to be open? Are we going to be closed? Things are changing every day. Use that to your advantage and say, ask your customers, um, what is working for them. Ask your customers what they need. Ask them about the experience you're giving them. Tell them you're going through a transition. Make them part of that transition, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. You could do something as simple as start a Facebook group while your business is completely shut down and start taking feedback and have conversations with your customers, mm. you know? Um, you can really connect with them more. I would say get as close to them as possible right now and use it as a dialogue time right to engage your customers we're going through transition you're in it with us tell mm -hmm. us how you'd like us to come out of this what's that experience you like at the end right. um, we want to do this with you so make them a part of it and 
let them know they're still the priority by doing that, despite all of this. And then um, I would say, look for creative partnerships because we're stronger together. And I mean, really makes it up. For sure, yeah, yeah. Okay? For sure. Um, I love what Border X does down in also Barrio Logan. Um, craft beer and cupcakes. <laughs> you know, what? Yes. Well, it's, <laughs> exactly. they, you think right. about your audiences, right? right? right. Craft mm -hmm. and nuanced, uh, different types of things. And you can start to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Don't just think about vendors and suppliers, but get creative and really leverage other small businesses who are struggling too and see if we can raise yeah. all ships. Right, right, right. 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 You just reminded me of a restaurant, and, and actually in Del Mar, it's uh, Ponte Vecchio, and that the customer experience is really pleasant, right? The pleasantries, like greeting you at the door, like making you feel like VIP through that whole process, mm -hmm. right? So understanding those types of elements, you are absolutely correct, Kelly. It's like the win is in the details, right? Details. And focusing on those targeted hotspots, like what am I missing? with that customer experience? What am I not leaving them with? Because a lot of companies that I work with, they don't realize you know, that if one unhappy customer in their eyes may be just one unhappy customer, but that's not true, it's not the case. Yeah. Because he or she is going back and telling their friends who tells their friends yeah. or going back to their community. So yeah. that one individual that had a bad experience with you, yeah. not the product or service, the experience, and they had that bad experience, they're going to go and share that, you know, disdain or dis disconnect with the people that they frequent with most. Yeah. So that one That's person true. turns into 25, 50 individuals. And Very the opposite good. is, <laughs> you have yeah. an amazing experience exactly. and yes. people are talking about it and that's probably the best marketing out there is referrals of people like, you gotta go check out this restaurant or this new store or whatever it is because I went and had an amazing experience. So yeah, Marcus, you're right. It's can go one of two ways, you know, yes. it can go, it could hurt your business or it could really help your business by that experience. Mm -hmm. And businesses are competing on experience now. Absolutely. You can find yes. products anywhere, yep. yes. right? You, you're a small fish in a big sea from yep. now on because we have the internet and you can yep. get anything you want anywhere. So your experience is really the only thing you can control and through those details, make it unique, differentiate your business mm -hmm. and get people to remember you, to make it memorable. So if you need help with that, that's what Peachy does. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do workshops, we have tips, and I just put out a new ebook, so um, there's that. But I really wanna also, again, say how well the small businesses are hanging in there. It's tough, we have a small business also in our family, including my Peachy, but we also have more, and it's, it's a day-to-day check-in. So thanks for checking in with everyone today. Yeah, thank you guys thank for you. being here today. Thank yes. you, and thank yeah. you, Marcus. I really appreciate you guys. Yeah, okay, you so if you need anything, travel. remember East County Chamber of Commerce, um, eastcountychamber.org, yep. and rebuildeastcounty.com. Peachy Fresh Thinking. <laughs> com. Yes. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. All right, everybody, thanks. Any questions? No. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Hey. Thank you, bye. <laughs> bye. How do I end it? We'll do a dance. <laughs>